okay so in this problem the it is given that the ray of light is suffering minimum deviation okay so what happens during minimum deviation to understand that this diagram we are drawing see during minimum deviation this angle of incidence and angle of emergence are equal whenever minimum deviation is there also during minimum deviation this r1 angle and r2 angles are also equal so in the question it is given that it's a minimum deviation right so we can take r1 angle must be equal to this r2 angle okay now the sum of r1 and r2 angle is equal to a angle of the prism this a now since it is an equilateral prism the a angle you take 60 degree this a is 60 degree okay and r1 and r2 both are equal so we can write r1 plus r1 that is 2 r1 equals to 60 hence r1 will be 30 degree once we got r1 angle and say refractive index is given so with the help of snell's law we can find angle of incidence if i apply over here snell's law so snell's law we can write this way sine of i divided by sine of r1 equals to refractive index of prism okay this is a snell's law so sine of i will be equal to refractive index into sine r1 this refractive index they have given us root 2 and r1 angle is 30 degree right put it r1 30 so sine 30 is 1 upon 2 into root 2 so it become 1 upon root 2 so sine i angle is 1 by root 2 which simply means that i angle is 45 degree so angle of incidence is 45 degree for this problem okay let's move to the second problem now okay now for this problem also first you read the question carefully and uh, let's draw one diagram to understand the situation okay so here the emerging ray is coming out by grazing the surface it means from here when the ray comes out the ray will go this way like this this if the ray is going by touching the prism surface this is called grazing the ray is grazing so here you can understand that emergence angle has become 90 degree right so we have to find out angle of incidence we need to find at which e become 90 degree now this angle is r1 and this angle is r2 okay. now if you see here the ray is uh, grazing the surface right so it is an example of total internal reflection we can say the emerging ray which is there it is suffering total internal reflection in this case this r2 angle which is there r2 angle must be equal to the critical angle of incidence okay here i am i am assuming that you know the total internal reflection topic here at this point the ray is suffering total internal reflection okay it's grazing the surface so this r2 angle on which it is falling this r2 angle must be equal to the critical angle this ic is nothing but critical angle okay, for total internal reflection now so both sides if i take sine function sine r2 will be equal to sine of critical angle now sine of critical angle is 1 upon mu okay, equal to sine r2 now see here mu is given 2 refractive index is 2 put here 2 and then so sine r2 is 1 upon 2 if sine r2 is 1 upon 2 that means r2 is 30 degree okay now okay see now r1 plus r2 is equal to a angle of the prism now this a angle is 60 degree because it's an equilateral prism so put a angle 60 r1 is 30 plus r2 so r2 is also coming 30 degree sorry r2 is already 30 r1 will also come 30 okay see r1 will be 30 okay. okay 
the value of R2 you substitute, R1 is coming 30. Now here if you apply Snell's law, once you got R1 value, then Snell's law can help you to find angle of incidence. So by Snell's law, we can write that sin i by sin r1 is equal to the refractive index of prism. So again, sin of i will be mu times of sin of r1. Okay, so this mu is given to and r1 is 30 degree, right? Sin 30. Let's solve it. Here we got angle of incidence for this problem. Okay, so now this is the next question on the prism topic. First, read the question carefully. Observe the diagram. Okay, make it clear first of all. Now, now in this problem, we want the emerging ray that is coming out. We want the emerging ray to be going undeviated through the face AC. Okay, first of all. Um, if I just show the diagram that how it can go undeviated that I'm doing. Suppose if the ray falls this way. Okay. Okay. Now we want that it should go undeviated through face AC. It means we want this condition. Okay. See, without bending the ray is going straight over here. See, F this is possible only if the ray falls here at a 90 degree angle. If the ray falls here at 90 degree, then only this thing is possible. Okay, now, first of all, uh, it's an isosceles prism. That means uh, we can say since it's isosceles, this angle will be equal to this angle. It's both angles will be equal. Now here the angle is 90 degree. So the sum of these two angles will also be 90 degree. So it's obvious this angle has to be 45 degree and this also 45 degree. Okay, now if you see this triangle, here the angle is 90 degree over here. This is 45. So simple geometry we can use. This also will be 45. Okay. Now, if this is 45 degree, then this angle is also 45 degree. This angle, can you see? It's actually actually angle of refraction R1. R1. This angle is refraction angle R1. That is 45. So over here, if I apply simply Snell's law. So simply if I apply Snell's law, so I can get that sine of i divided by sine of r1 is equal to mu, refractive index of prism. Now refractive index is given root 2, this is root 2. r1 angle, just now I explained to you, this is r1 angle, that is 45 degree, sine 45 into sine i. Okay. Just solve it, you will get a sine i is equal to 1. Okay. If sin i is 1, that means i angle must be 90 degree. So, if we wish that this ray goes undeviated, this angle of incidence has to be nearly 90 degree. Then, it will emerge undeviated from AC phase. So, it's a very simple problem. Diagram plays a major role over here. You need to understand that how do we got these angles. So, then only simply Snell's law will give you result. So I hope these three problems on the optics are clear. We'll meet in the next video with some more questions on the physics. Okay, bye-bye.